Yo guys, welcome back to another video. I am back um, after a little bit of not uploading, just a, just a little bit, um, over a week. I didn't upload last weekend because, I mean, if you guys are on the Discord, you know. But I was celebrating my birthday. My birthday was this past Tuesday. Um, and over the weekend, I was celebrating it. I had a friend over. It was just an overall busy busy weekend not just with my birthday stuff but like there's a lot going on i've been working on trying to get my driver's license stuff like that there's just a lot uh so i was not able to upload and i promised that you know i'd pretty much only upload on weekends so i waited and now i'm ready to start making videos again and i'm gonna try and get two at least two videos out this weekend um i think that'll work pretty well and uh yeah today i'm gonna be talking about Something that I've wanted to talk about for just a little bit now, um, an anime that I watched the beginning of September, or maybe not the beginning of September, I don't know, actually no no no, scratch that, it was at the end of September, um, and it's sort of Netflix's newest hot topic at the moment, and that is none other than Cyberpunk Edgerunners. Um, went way under the radar for a lot of people, including myself, but it looked interesting enough to want me to make me want to check it out and i was blown away and surprised by just how great it was and i'm here to talk about that so as somebody who has never even played the cyberpunk games and knows little to nothing about it uh, and never really watched any playthroughs or anything about the game uh, when it first released or really till this day um, i have not experienced the game whatsoever uh, but I've always liked the concept and thought it was super dope, but was turned away from the game after learning about how bad it was at launch. That isn't to say that I'll never play it. It's actually a game that I really do want to play, because lately I've been trying to get back into games. The only problem is that games are pretty expensive these days. Um, anyway, I know nothing about it, but this show allowed me to experience the world and the world building of the cyberpunk um world um really well i thought and maybe you know i could be wrong but i think they did a good job you know maybe people who are more well versed in the cyberpunk franchise could you know shoot it down uh who disagree but i think that for somebody who's never experienced any of it it did a pretty good job so I can't really just sing this show's praises without, you know, giving you guys an explanation of what exactly it is for those of you who don't know. Um, now, again, I, last, I watched this at the end of last month, so it's been about a month since I've seen anything about this. I've seen people talk about it, but really haven't engaged with much about this show at all uh, since I watched it. So there's a lot of uh, character names and stuff like that, small details that I might forget. Like I don't even remember the main character's name, uh, which is probably bad, but bear with me. I'm gonna try and give you guys a good idea of what you guys are getting into if you haven't already seen it. So Cyberpunk Edge Runners follows our main character, again, whose name I don't remember. I'll throw it up on the screen. I'll look it up after the fact. Um, and basically this kid, teenager basically he lives in like the ghetto of a city called night city um his mom is like a cleanup crew i guess or like a first responder or something like that and um she's paying for him to be in like this prestigious school so that he can make a life for himself and not live in extreme poverty because he has the brains for it um you know and work his way up through the corporate ladder of this arasaka company uh which is like the big tech company that fuels pretty much everything that goes around goes on in this city uh again as far as like technology goes um he's super smart but he is not a great student that causes a lot of problems now just to give you guys an idea without going into too much detail for again people who haven't seen it various events happen uh and you know anime moms do what anime moms do if you know you know um and the main character ends up finding this 
piece of cybernetic uh, like hardware that you can attach to like your body. That's a big thing about the cyberpunk universe is people get what they call chromed out or like different c cyborg pieces. They're like a normal human, but they can uh, upgrade their bodies. Uh, like they will go to the doctors and pay to get like a robot arm to increase strength or like different chips. They can plug in chips and like give them different abilities and stuff. It's pretty interesting. And he ends up finding like this military grade like spinal attachment. And basically what it does is it allows him to go pretty much bullet time, uh, if you guys are familiar with that. Almost like Neo from the Matrix when he's dodging the bullets. That's sort of where that, you know, term comes from. Again, don't want to give too much away. I'll go into spoiler kind of stuff here in a little bit. Uh, but just to finish up, I guess, the basic summary. Him and this new crew, well, at first he has to kind of prove himself and does like this whole little training arc kind of thing. Um, and they just go out on missions, blow stuff up, kill people, uh, get paid, and then they increasingly go on like more dangerous missions until they're kind of in a bind and it's very high stakes what happens. A lot of people get killed. Some on their team, I'll just say that. Um, there's just a lot that goes on in like the middle to end of, uh, the show. A lot of high stakes and, um. Uh, yeah, very cool. Uh, I'm gonna talk about stuff that I did like and didn't like here in just a second. Now, what did I like about this show? First of all, subject matter. You know, it just feels like gritty and like dirty. I know you're like you're just in the back alleys of some futuristic Neo City smuggling cybernetic parts and stuff while like blowing people up. It's just that whole like, almost like a, a noir vibe, like detectives kind of thing, but like cybernetic and stuff. I don't know. It just gives me like this gangster vibe and stuff like that, but just futuristic. It's really cool. Um, I like that feel, uh, which really pushes me to want to play the game now that a lot of the initial bugs and stuff are for the most part fixed. Um, the whole vibe and subject matter is awesome. Not to mention the art and like, I say art, but like the animation, the character designs are very vibrant. Uh, it's done by Studio Trigger. I forgot to mention that. Of course, you guys know I love Studio Trigger. Um, I haven't seen everything that they've created, but I'm a big fan of Kill La Kill and also uh, the part that they did in the Star Wars Visions anime that came out. Their part in that was also super dope. And the Studio Trigger just has a very unique style that's, you know, if you see a Studio Trigger anime, you're like, that's Studio Trigger. And yeah, absolutely love it. One thing that I did quite like, but also kind of caught me off guard at first, is how mature uh, this is. Now, I understand that the source material and like the game, well, even the, the game that we do know, uh, Cyberpunk 2077, isn't really the source material. I think there was like a maybe a tabletop game before that. Anyway, the game is a very mature one, uh, so there is a lot of stuff in there, but I didn't exactly think that that would correlate with anime. Uh, and I guess I wasn't really thinking about it going into the anime, but oh my God, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, definitely not for kids, uh, but I do like it that they weren't afraid to do that. I like when anime or manga is able to like step outside of the box and do some things that you know, you're not expecting, especially in this, uh, not genre, but like format, I guess, or um, there's a certain word I'm looking for, but I'll figure it out. It'll come to me in a minute or I'll just throw up what I'm looking for on the screen. Uh, medium, yeah, in this medium. It's really interesting to see stuff like that be done. So yeah, stuff from like extreme language, there's a lot of F-bombs there being thrown around, extreme gore and violence, uh, which I thought was dope. Like people are straight up getting their faces and heads just crushed and smashed. Heads are getting blown off. There's, it's a bloodbath and it's awesome. Love it. You know, I sound like a psychopath talking about this. It's great. Explosions, titties. It, it's got everything for you. Um, it's like the whole nine yards. It's a mature anime. 
definitely not for kids, but it's very enjoyable. Now I'm just gonna start to get into like spoiler stuff. Uh, so if you guys have not seen it or you know, and care about spoilers, do not watch this part of the video um, as I'll be talking about the end and all that. Uh, so from here on out, don't watch the rest of the video. If you want my final thoughts, I'll give them to you right now. This is one of the best anime out right now, like period. And like, it's great. Um, went way under the radar. You know, Netflix has disappointed a lot in recent years um, as far as their anime go. Uh, stuff like Castlevania was fantastic. I love Castlevania. I, I'm not, and by their anime, I mean like, you know, their exclusives or, or like their produced stuff, I guess. Um, but stuff like Blood of Zeus really made me hesitant uh, because I was super excited for Blood of Zeus when that first came out. It made me very hesitant going into this and sub subverted my expectations completely. Um, Netflix did not disappoint with this one. And yeah, if you listen to anybody, there's tons of other reviews out there. It seems the common consensus is that people loved it and so did I. Um, so those are my final thoughts. Now to get into like spoiler stuff. Firstly, uh, if you guys know me, I like to not think that I am, but I'm sort of a drama queen, okay? I like good drama when it comes to my, you know, media that I consume, whether that's books, TV, anime, movies, games. There's got to be a little romance thrown in, a little spice, you know what I'm saying? And this definitely does that well. Uh, the bond and like the romance between the main character again whose name i can't remember and our main female lead um main female lead that's a bit redundant but you guys know what i mean lucy uh who's a great character probably my favorite character in the series i don't know if she's exactly the most well written uh, that's for you guys to decide i can't really speak on that because i don't remember a whole lot about her like arc well i guess She's a pretty well-written character, the more I think about it, but I'm not focusing on that right now. Their romance was great. Really enjoyed watching that unfold. You know, I always root for the main character uh, with the ladies, you know what I'm saying? You know, I did when I was watching Avatar, The Last Airbender, rooted for my boy Aang to get with Katara and Parasite. You know, I rooted for, uh, frick, what's his name? The main character to get with the main chick you know i always root for the main character and this definitely for people like me who like that kind of thing it had something for me in that aspect um also i think a highlight for me from this uh series is the main character and the arc he has now it's a shame that i don't remember his name but he is a very well written character in my opinion um from his origins that we see in the very beginning of the show him being kind of clumsy and all new to this underground gangster scene uh, that he had never been a part of to him growing with the team and growing bonds with other people until there's a bit of a time skip in the middle uh where you know he just takes lead uh, he's the boss you know what i'm saying uh, he gets all these upgrades and stuff which also causes another problem that i'll get into which is like another part of his arc that I did like. Um, he gets really inconsistent later on because he gets so much upgrades and it starts to cause what they call cyber psychosis, which is like the more robotic parts you get attached to your body, there comes a point to where your body can't handle it and you're basically driven insane because uh, you're more robot than man throughout the show you know there are people who we see firsthand go cyber what are they called? cyber psycho or whatever where they just like go berserk for no reason it causes like mood swings and all that kind of stuff uh almost like a drug addict and one of the things is that people get addicted to like body transplants because they feel like it gives them more power you know they're addicted to power uh, and throughout the show, we see examples of this with different characters. Uh, one in particular, um, again, spoiler, the main, like, boss dude uh, from the beginning of the show. 
we see him go cyber psycho and it causes a lot of problems uh, towards the middle um, before the little time skip uh, and that you know I feel like should have been a wake-up call to the main character but he's so determined as a character on his goal that he doesn't listen to all the people saying you know yo you should you should calm it down with those upgrades even his own girlfriend um lucy who's kind of like yeah you kind of chilled out bro like and all of his crew members um until the end and we can see the progression throughout the second half of the show about him slowly being driven to madness um and by the end of the show he does die and uh but it sort of completes his arc. It felt complete, even though the main character died because indirectly he was able to give Lucy her dream, um, which was set up at the very beginning and also sort of completes her arc as well, which is why I kind of went back and said that she kind of is a well-written character you know, the more I think about it. And yeah, the main character, just seeing the progression of this character from being a kid to becoming a man and then being driven into insanity is just very interesting and engaging uh, to watch. And yeah, guys, that is going to be about it for my review. I hope you guys did enjoy. Overall, again, fantastic. Really enjoyed it. It was a sleeper hit. And if you haven't seen it already, go watch it. Uh, you know, let me know what you guys think of it. Um, but. I was not disappointed whatsoever. It was fantastic. And if you've played the game, also, let me know what you think uh, of the show. I'd be interested to know what people who've played the game or love the game think about the show and like compare and contrast. Because actually, the show is a bit of a prequel to the game uh, because of. I guess it's. I don't know if it's like canon that it's the prequel. It might be. I'm not sure. I know they did a DLC for the game, but that's besides the point. Um, yeah, it was great. Let me know what you guys think. And, uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.